Well, uh, the first six months, or actually it'll be six months in June, uh, have, have been tremendous. And, and we've been trying to um, uh, better understand uh, ha how, this, how this territory works. I mean, it, it, it geographically, of course, as we know, it's a very small area that Gibraltar covers. Um, but it's actually quite a complicated place. Um, uh, it's complicated in business terms, in social terms, uh, and, and in every other way. And so I've been spending my time, uh, along with my wife Liz, tr trying to get round as many people, as many institutions uh, as, as, as we can, uh, in order to better understand uh, what, what makes it tick. You've been thrust into a pretty dense political situation at the moment. Uh, how prepared were you for this, and uh, how has it uh, affected your job? In the last nine months, I've done nothing but read about the history of Gibraltar, both, both history a long time ago and, and of mm. course, uh, in much more depth uh, in, in recent times. Um, and I was able to engage with lots of people in and around London, academics, politicians, friends of Gibraltar, um, past governors, the, the, the last six governors um, I, I, I spoke at great length to. So yes, I was able to do quite uh, a lot of preparation before even setting foot uh, in Gibraltar. But that's, that's fine and very useful, but of course there is no substitute for talking to the actual mm. people who live uh, and work here, the politicians, the businessmen. So it's been hugely useful this, this, this last six months. I, I mean, I'm not there yet. It, mm. Even though it's a small place, it's, it is complicated and there's, and there's a lot more to find out. Only yesterday you met with the group for a humanitarian frontier. Uh, what sort of uh, feedback do you get from a human perspective as to how day-to-day -day people are, are affected by the problems at the border? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's clear to me. I, I have not ex I've visited Gibraltar in the past. I've been living in Gibraltar during a period of time when, when uh, the, the problems on the frontier have, have, have existed. So I haven't experienced a much more open frontier. But, of course, I can see uh, for myself, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a subscriber to the... Royal Gibraltar Police Twitter um, uh, site, uh, which I check multiple times a day, along with lots of other ones as well. And I see the length of the queues, and I, and I see the disruption that causes uh, for, for people on, on a daily basis. And that obviously concerns me, it concerns everybody in Gibraltar, and actually it concerns everybody in London as well. Um, uh, and uh, you know, looking for solutions to that uh, is what we spend uh, a lot of our time doing. How do you feel those solutions can come about when they have to be balanced, for example, uh, against uh, relations with Spain, which, uh, which uh, have recently been the subject of, mm. of much talk. Uh, mm. For example, I is Gibraltar perhaps a thorn in the side of relations between the, uh, the UK and Spain? Well, no. I mean, they're a part of the. Uh, it, it, you know, it is a fact that Gibraltar exists in the way that it does in the political situations it does. So, so it couldn't be described as a thorn in the side. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is. It is a, a fact of, of of our existence here, mm. and, and that has to be managed. But I mean, ultimately, the the the, the problems on the border here and, and the delays on the border uh, are, are hitting the Spanish. Who cross the border each day, uh, uh, just as much mm. uh, as it's hitting Gibraltarians. So, so there is there is no advantage for anybody in in a continuance of, of, of this situation. So, in the end, there has to be a um, um, a, a negotiated uh, solution to the problem of the border. Um, uh, it, there are some genuine concerns uh, uh, about cross border activity that that, that, that needs to be kept uh, under control. Uh, and you will have seen um, that, that Gibraltar has, has been doing a lot of work uh, recently to improve the flow and, mm. to, um, uh, and, and we've seen in the papers in the last few days about intelligence-led um, uh, and intelligent um, uh, running a, a, of that border. Um, and that's the way forward. Um, it's, it's, a Euro it's a border between two European countries. Um, clearly, uh, there has to be some control of it. Um, but we need to do that in a way uh, that allows people to cross with, with minimum disruption. That has to be by negotiation. Over the last few days, you've been visiting some local institutions, for example, the airport uh, and the Bruce's farm. Uh, can you tell us about these? Yes, well, I've been, I've been trying to get round, uh, you know, as many of the institutions and organisations of both government and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and charitable and social type ones, and, and we're about to, to start visiting um, some schools, um, uh, after Easter to see how the schools work mm. um, and 
it's it's just extraordinarily useful to, to be able to understand how the place works. Of course, it's not just government. You know, I've been talk, talking to the gaming people, uh, the, the gaming, uh, you know, the ministers, but the, also the gaming community, the financial services community. Although I have no, um, as governor, as you know, constitutionally, I have no responsibility uh, for those. Um, I very much see my role as governor to be a, a sort of interpretative role. I do it all in conjunction with number six, my outer office team, with the chief minister's outer office team, and then deal with the ministers. So I don't do any of these things w without the knowledge. And, 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 and chief minister was, was very happy, very content, very supportive that I should be doing that sort of thing so that I can better understand how the place works and interpret that for London.